Okay, guys, I'm here today with Gordon Ryan, a huge honor for me. Guys, today Gordon is going to teach us here his passing guard system 2.0. So, what's new there, Gordon? All right, so this is a very interesting uh, topic that I have. And um, it looks like a kind of strange position, but when I actually get into it, it'll make sense. Um, first, let's talk about why I developed this passing system and why, I, why, we, why you would ever stand like this um, when, you're, when you're passing. Um, when I first started training at Henzo's, I was doing leg locks and I was leg locking everybody and it was going well and you know that, that was good for a while. And then everyone's leg lock defenses got so good that I couldn't leg lock anybody anymore. So my submission rate started to go down and uh, I was like, well, I need to do something else now. If I can't leg lock people, I'm not submitting anyone. I need to figure out how to pass them and actually get to their back or you know, finish them from mount or something else. So I was like, hmm, what can I do? So then I started developing body lock passing and I started using body lock passes, and then that started that that, that uh, was going well for you know six months, a year, a year and a half, and then guys started to realize that okay, if Gordon locks his hands around my hips, he's going to pass me with the body lock. Um, so what they started to do was they started to bring the knees together like this and elbows together. So then I went to go in body lock, and I could never get my hands wrapped around the guy. Or they would just all together start playing a guard on their back in the sumpine position, and then there's no waist exposure, so you can't lock a body lock. So I was like, bam. I can't leg lock people and I can't body lock past people anymore. So what can I do now? I was like, well, I'll force them into half guard. So then I started playing from half guard and I started using ways to get chest to chest and I started passing guys from half guard and I developed a good half guard passing game. And then it got to a point where guys were playing with such good frames with his top leg and the bottom leg that it was almost impossible for me to go linear into my partner's far shoulder and get any kind of upper body inside position and pass them. So I was like, well, now I can't leg lock, and it's hard to body lock, and I can't pass from half guard, so now what do I do? So then I started working on Toriando passing. Well, I'm like, well, if I, can't do, if I can't do tight passing, then I'll work on loose passing. So I worked, started working on Toriando passing and leg pommeling, where I would go in, and I would start floating over my partner, and we started using leg pommeling like this, and then you know that, this was working for a, for a while, and we looked at this in, in the first passing instructional, and I was having a lot of success with leg pommeling and getting past my partner's legs and things like that. And then I got to a point where everyone's so good at defending leg locks and leg pommeling that it was hard to win those leg pommeling battles. So I was like, okay, well then let me start to use Toriandos. So then I started using Toriandos and I was able to get outside of my partner's legs and I was able to start creating pressure side to side where he goes to bring his legs in. I tore on the back the other way and I start passing like that. Then that was working well. And then I was using a combination of all of those things. And then what I started to realize was guys started to play with, with wide open knees and legs, and it would make it very hard for me to start getting to an angle of my partner. So I'd go to Toriando and he would extend the leg and I'll get caught up in De La Hiva and I'll be playing for minutes at a time inside this guy's guard. So what I started to put an emphasis on was getting past my partner's J point. Now the J point is the point at which my partner is in jeopardy of having his guard passed. If I step past my partner's hip line, the hip line is the critical demarcation line, which will put him in jeopardy of having his guard pass. If I step to this position, he just makes a small adjustment and re-entangles me with his legs. But if I step past Bernardo's hip line, now he's in real danger, he's in real jeopardy of having his guard pass. He needs to give me a big reaction, whether it's a high leg or whatever the case is, to go into a guard recovery. He's in jeopardy of being passed. So I started to put a big emphasis on getting to the J point and camping on this on this on this J point. So we call it J point camping, where I get to the J point, the jeopardy, the jeopardy point, and then I just set up camp and I sit in this position. Because it's hard to get to this, this position on a tough guy. If you're trying to Toriando, maybe I do three feints, and then from here, for one time, one, one of those times, I get past the J point, and now he just recovers, and now I'm back inside of his guard again. So I started to put an emphasis on getting past the hip line and staying there for as long amount of time as possible to tire guys out over time. The problem with this is that when you go to Toriando and the knees are wide, you can't even get past the hip line to begin with. So I started to use a, a combination of Toriandos and high step passing, where I would initially try to Toriando like so, and I would go into this J point camping. Everyone's seen a post on the knee and a hand and elbow inside the hip. But what everyone makes a mistake of is head position. So the people go in here, they start to try to pass, and Bernardo just high legs, 
and can recover guard. So instead, I play a game where I crash the far shoulder. The second I get to this position, I take my head, I put it on Bernardo's far shoulder. He's trying to face me, right, recover guard, and I play in this position. There's no way so to get there. When Bernardo tries to recover any way he can, it's not an easy thing no. to do. The high leg's not there. The only thing Bernardo can do is play a hand fighting game at this leg to stop me from running the knee away. But understand that you're not using any energy from here. Bernardo's in a full crunch the whole time. And if at any point his knees aren't being pulled to his chest, he'll get past. If at any point Bernardo brings his knees away from his chest, he gets his guard passed. So I sit in this position and I just play at the knee. So when Bernardo goes to recover, I just sit here. He goes to recover, he goes to strip my hand, no problem. He goes to get a full recovery. There's no way, I got it. I just stay in this position for 10, 20, 30 seconds. Yeah, that's time. crazy tiring. A minute at a time, and it's exhausting for the guy on bottom. The problem is, to get to this position is very hard on a good guy. To get past the J point is a difficult thing. So what I started to do when Toriando started failing was as I would go to start Toriandoing, he would extend his legs and make it hard with wide knees. So now from here, I would just start stuffing the leg, stepping to his hip and stepping to this position here. You have to understand the relationship between this. If your partner's knees are to his chest, it's a very hard thing to expose his hip and step my foot to the inside. Usually his hands out here or his knees inside. It's hard to step to Bernardo's hip, but it's easy now to Toriando. If, on the other hand, Bernardo reaches his leg towards me, it's hard for me to Toriando, but it's easy to step to his hip. Good. Because now the knee's coming away from the chest, I can expose that hip, and now I step into this position where I form a temporary closed wedge around Bernardo's leg like and so. My leg is stuck here. Now from here, I take either a V-grip or a reverse V-grip on Bernardo's ankle, and I take a shoulder post like so. It looks pretty unstable, but when Bernardo goes to move around from here, you have a few seconds to start playing a game where I can high step through and play a game from here. And now I'm in a position where I'm past this J point. And now from here, I can either go into passing or when Bernardo goes to recover and bring the knees back inside, we go, go back to the, we go yeah, right back into our camping position. I got it. And now from here, we can use the high stepping combined with the Toriando. If the knees are to the chest, Toriando is easy. If I can't Toriando and he reaches towards me, I stuff a leg, I step in, and I step out. And we use this dilemma to get past the J point, past the hip line. Now when Bernardo goes to recover, I have a multitude of options, where as he goes to bring the knees back inside, we go in, and from here we start passing. And the final, uh, uh, the final piece to this is very worst case scenario, Bernardo entraps my leg with his bottom leg. What people will start doing is they will start desperately reaching with their bottom leg to get to your leg and trap it. And then when I, have when I see this, right, that's amazing. we slide him out, and now he's bottom half guard, chest to chest, and this is exactly where I want it to be the whole time. I want to get chest to chest and half guard, because now I know oh, I'm going to pass it. So I play this trilemma. Toriando, high stepping, J point camping, and then we either pass from there, we move to half guard, and start passing from there. And all this will be made easy by using a series of feints. So if you think about striking, when a guy feints with his lead hand, you think nothing of it. When you think about wrestling, if the guy feints a leg, you think nothing of it. But no one ever feints in an intelligent way when they're guard passing. You know, they do this, they move around, but they're not real believable feints. It's like in wrestling, if you just reach for a guy's leg, no one believes that feint. You have to change level and actually make a feint believable. So I make a feint believable where from here, I throw the legs in one direction and I create tension in his legs. We've all trained with those guys that feel like Gumby, where you go to move their legs around and you're just like, man, I can't do anything with this guy. So I want to create tension in Bernardo's legs. With tension running through the legs, it makes it so much easier to move the legs around and predict where his body will be. If I asked Bernardo or any one of you to pick me up and carry me across the room, it would be much easier if I was fully flexed the whole time and if I was just dead weight on the floor. Yep. So the feints create tension running through your partner's legs. So when I go to throw my partner's legs to one side and he reacts, now there's tension. And now this makes it easier to actually throw it to the side that I wanted and get a reaction. So I play a game where he's in front of me, he's trying to play guard. 
Yeah, and from incredible. here, we create tension running through the legs with different kinds of feints. And from here, it's a pretty easy thing to start getting tension running through the legs and then creating an angle where from here we can get past the hip line and start to go to work. Yeah. Well, Gordon, I mean, I love it because it's something that everybody can do. And for example, uh, it seems to me that that's almost like a three part system, right? It's the Toriano, the camping, and the one, how do you call it? The, the high one? step. The high step. And Toriano, you learn the first week in Jiu Jitsu, you know? Yeah. So, everyone in Toriano does. You pretty much take the very basic Jiu Jitsu that everybody learns and you put a ton of timing on it yeah. to create tension and to create this dilemma between the three of them, yeah, right? Yeah, you create a trilemma so that if they defend one, they run to the other problem. Then they defend that and they run to the first problem. Yeah. So it's this never ending cycle that you do it for two minutes, five minutes. And there's almost like minutes. a fourth option that's a bonus that's the half guard. Yeah. So and you, worst case scenario, the guy takes, takes you back into the legs. Okay, well, now you're chest to chest and half guard. And, and that was our main goal since the beginning. Exactly. I wanted to use body box to step over into half guard. When I couldn't do that, I'd force the guy into half guard and try to go linear and get past the frames and pass from half guard. My whole thing is passing from half guard. So that's just another way yeah. to get to half guard when I couldn't use the previous options. Yeah, wow, that's incredible. Yeah, so guys, something that everybody can do. You know how to do Toriana. You know how to do, how to stay on top on half guard. Yeah, even like the, the camping, it's pretty basic. Like, yeah, everyone, the, everyone knows to keep hands on the, posture, on the yeah. knee. It's just the head position with whatever everyone yeah. messes up. Yeah. They always allow the high leg. So the whole oh. thing is to start camping, not allow the high leg, and then just oh. play a game where they stay in that position. Everyone goes there and they get so focused on getting to the head and the shoulders that they lose the whole position a lot of the times. Yeah. I just hang out there and I just camp in that position and you just see energy levels. It's like a video game. The energy level starts up here yep. and as the match goes on, it just drops, 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 drops. And it's, it's, it's very, very tiring from the guy on bottom and you're using almost no energy. Man, that's incredible. So guys, Gordon just shot an entire instructional all about that, all about how to put these three parts in the system and uh, it's coming out really, really good. And it's going to be at bgjfanatics.com very soon. Maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So make sure to check that out. And thanks so much, Gordon. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.